What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So I'm gonna check out The Rock is losing thousands of fans per hour and why. This is very interesting. I didn't know he was losing fans like that. Uh, Could have sworn that people were loving uh, his recent return back into wrestling uh, as the final boss. So I'm not sure exactly what's going on. This is by Sunny V2. Uh, we checked out his recent video talking about Ronda Rousey. So this should be very interesting. I'm not sure exactly what's going on with The Rock here, but uh, let's see exactly why he's losing so many fans as of recently. WrestleMania's most disliked video ever, and through some terrible podcast appearances, a completely out of touch fundraiser, and his reputation as a walking talking advertisement, the world's fakest celebrity has for the first time ever seen a fall in Instagram followers. But the biggest contributor might be his endless list of lies on everything from his movie earnings to fast food consumption. For example, back in 2017, The Rock posted this photo to his Instagram claim I've never been to in and out before, which didn't seem all that serious until roughly five years later, when in August 2022, he'd post the following video. This is the very first time that I have ever tried an in and out burger or in and out fries or anything from in and out for that matter. He therefore claimed for a second time it was my first ever time eating in and out, yet he might not have been guilty given he'd also said this. Now I've picked up some in and out burger before for some buddies of mine. I've never tried it, so this is a first. That would be until December 2023 when The Rock claimed for a third time he'd had my first in and out burger experience, also pretending like he'd never even tried fast food before. I didn't know the lingo, didn't know who to pay, where to pay, didn't know shit, before adding some self-congratulatory comments about leaving a massive tip. This led to mainstream media articles and a 6 million view Penguin Zero video. This is the third time he's done it. He keeps pretending that he's trying in and out for the first time every couple of years the other two videos are yeah that definitely i'm my bad i'm i was huge on on the screen the entire time that's actually kind of weird if you really think about it um it, it seems like there had to be some type of cross promotion with in and out but i don't know why they would have him say this is your first time trying it it's kind of weird are still on your Instagram page. Forcing The Rock to change his description by adding, my first ever In-N-Out burger experience again. Thanks to the fans who reminded me that I went to In-N-Out years ago and totally forgot about it, but there was another lie that did way more damage. Black. Do you want to give someone the benefit of a doubt of them actually forgetting about going to In-N-Out? I mean, with The Rock being as busy as, he's it, busy as he is, possibly... But to do it three times, I don't know about that. Maybe the first time, cool. But to do it three times separately over a span of a few years, I don't know. I don't know. Adam was released in December 2022, yet after its theater run ended, Insider published an article reading, Box Office Bust, Black Adam Faces Theatrical Losses. The article explained that the film needed to earn around 600 million worldwide to break even, yet box office experts believe Black Adam will stall out with less than 400 million globally. Now the movie stands to lose 50 million to 100 million in its theatrical run, although only three days later, The Rock was saying the opposite. Waited to confirm with financiers before I shared this excellent Black Adam news. Our film will profit between 52 and 72 million, fact. Also attaching a Deadline article which stated, There's some snarking going on out there that Black Adam is poised to lose 50M to 100M. And that is simply just not true. The movie is bound to break even and be in the black. Well, it turns out this article was written with false information uh -oh. that The Rock had personally leaked to the journalist to make his film seem profitable. Profitable. After 25 years, we finally found out what The Rock is cooking. The books. <laughs> but the thing that's really cooking his reputation is perhaps the cooking itself, as The Rock's longest running and most off-putting lies are on the topic of diet and exercise. Mm -hmm. For example, The Rock claimed to be eating a suspicious amount of food. Anywhere between 6 to well, I would say possible almost 8,000 calories a day. Which was quickly shut down by Greg Doucette. There is no way The Rock burns off enough calories to average six to 8,000 calories a day and look like this. If he actually ate those kind of calories, six to 8,000 a day, he would be 100 pounds overweight. Who went through The Rock's entire daily diet before adding this. He described about 3,000 calories, maybe 
But where do we get the six to eight total thousand calories? calories the Rock also uploaded a raw uncut leg workout, which he called intense and unlike anything I've ever done, which Greg went on to criticize. But look at the grimaces on his face. Notice how hard he seems to be pushing. This is two plates on each side. A man of the rock stature, size, and strength. I would believe that this would be a cakewalk. Many bikini competitors could lift this much weight. And I'm not trying to strength shame him here, but I believe that you're lying when you say that this kicked your ass. There is no way that this was difficult for you. Highlighting the rock's Damn. most notable lie of all. There's not a fucking chance in hell he's clean. No. Not a chance in wow. hell. As big as the rock is. And I've heard a lot of people say this. I've, I've, we've, we've heard the speculation that he, he's definitely not 100% natural. I mean, if you've seen The Rock many years ago uh, when he was first doing the Hollywood uh, rock persona, you know, he had gained some muscle. But in comparison to many years later when he started really getting into his movie bag, he, it's like he bulked up even more, like considerably more. So we've heard the rumors, but I'm not sure how true it is, but we've definitely heard the rumors. The rumors have been out there for many years that he's definitely juicing. At 50? On the topic of steroids, Johnson has said he hasn't touched them since he was 18 when he tried them before college. Sure, you get a lot of people out there who will suspect and say shit. They want to negate the hard work you put in, although it's strange to see him only getting bigger despite yeah. now being into his 50s. Like Eddie Hall gave his voice on what Dwayne might be using. I would believe that The Rock would be on TRT, which is testosterone replacement therapy. A very good thing to do. It's actually very good for you, very healthy for you. While Joe Rogan theorized he was probably using more. You can't even get there with HRT. That's yeah. not HRT. Which was again echoed by Greg Doucette. Not only do I not think he's natural, I don't think he's on HRT. I think he's on the, the kitchen sink. Whatever he can take. Really? I think he's on all of it and then some. You don't get big like that into your 50s compared to your 40s and 30s. Like you see some photos of him in his 30s. He's way bigger and leaner now. This has helped him to earn the following title. Crazy. The Rock is the fakest celebrity in Hollywood. And nothing solidified this harder than The Rock's recent Joe Rogan episode. I was very hyped for this podcast, but it was honestly quite boring. Rock unironically has some serious politician traits with how he takes the middle road and nods his way through anything potentially controversial Joe would say. As mentioned, The Rock tiptoed through the entire episode. You tell The Rock just did not want to give his opinion on anything and he's walking on eggshells. You know, he's definitely worried about saying anything controversial or getting cancelled. Additionally, The Rock avoided controversy by controlling every topic, leading to other comments such as, Rock has asked Joe about a hundred questions so far, and I don't think Joe has asked Rock a single one. Joe is doing all the talking about the same old shit and I'm about to fall asleep. Damn. The whole episode just felt kind of weird, not only because of Joe previously calling The Rock a steroid user, but because The Rock had also called Joe Rogan out himself. I thought The Rock disowned Joe during the whole N-word incident. Back in 2022, when Joe posted this iconic video, The Rock stood firmly behind him by writing, Great stuff here, brother. Perfectly articulated. Looking forward to coming on one day and breaking out the tequila with you, although his support was met with backlash. Dear The Rock, you're a hero to many people, and using your platform to defend Joe Rogan, a guy that used and laughed about using the N-word dozens of times, is a terrible use of your power. Have you actually listened to this man's many racist statements about black people? causing The Rock to fold instantly. Oh. Dear Don Winslow, thank you so much for this. I hear you as well as everyone here 100%. I was not aware of his N-word use prior to my comments, but now I've become educated to his complete narrative. Learning moment for me, showing he'd cave from the smallest bit of criticism. Oh. The Rock was the most sanitized, neutered, safe person I've ever heard audio of. Not one real opinion. He was like the breathing version of ChatGPT in 10 years. <laughs> so here's the thing about that. So, in that situation, what do you do? You're obviously you're the rock. You have a lot of investors and a lot of people that, um, you know, I guess you could say there's money tied into you, and you find this out. There's two roads you could take. You could take the road of actually having a conversation and a dialogue with this person off camera to figure out what's going on, or maybe on camera, or you can do what he did and say, nah, I'm a fold because I got brands to take, you know, potentially take care of and and make sure that they're good. So it's it's a multitude of things. I would have personally at least reached out because he has the power and the, the connects to reach out. Is this true? 
give some context so I can understand before I ultimately give my judgment. Because I think a lot of us, we get caught up in what people have said in the past. I mean, shit, I've said some bad things in the past. I've done some bad things in the past. So if someone was to find that information, and I'm not talking about anything really crazy, but I've said some bad things. We all have. So if someone was to find that out and they want to do business with me or they want to, you know, do a podcast or whatever the case may be, is it not fair for that person to at least get some better context? Because obviously what you say in the past, you may not be the same person you are now. So that's the only thing. But I mean, it does show that as soon as someone said something with a verified mark, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people reached out to The Rock about the whole situation, it kind of folded. So I don't know. It's very interesting. The Rock might be physically strong, but clearly has no public backbone, and nothing showed this more comically than his recent Maui controversy. Nah, dude, After I, the I, island I, was I burned by fires, of... The Rock and Oprah launched the People's Fund of Maui, contributing $5 million each before asking the public to donate. So we appreciate any support that you can give. What do I do? What do I do? This is what you do. Oh, you know. The People's Fund of Maui. <laughs> the comments have since been turned off completely, yet they once echoed the sentiment math ain't mathing with this one. You guys literally have so much money. You can donate it and make it back within a year. Now, The Rock didn't need to respond. His $5 million donation was already extremely generous, yep. yet once again he couldn't handle the backlash and uploaded a video claiming he'd done the wrong thing. When we first launched the fund, there was some backlash and I want to address and acknowledge that backlash right now. And here's what I have to say about that. I get it and I completely understand and I could have been better, and next time I will be better. The Rock doesn't even feel like a real person anymore. He's basically just a walking business, with the whole walking billboard mentality becoming increasingly obvious to everyone. He only has one mode, and that's sales mode. For example, he simply had to celebrate his sold out wrestling match with a massive swig of tequila. And what about the drink of choice for his first time trying in and out Well, again, two straight shots of his own brand of alcohol. Not exactly believable. But what about this wholesome video where he pulls up to a tour bus? You guessed it, it's actually an ad. We're building our second distillery, and we are the largest employer of everybody in Jesus Maria. I love Jesus Maria. Thank you, brother. Did you try the tequila? By scrolling to any part of his Instagram, you can see that around 75% of his posts are sponsored, and the nickname Dwayne the Ad Johnson is therefore per- Now that's funny. Dwayne the Ad Johnson. I mean, he he's a walking spokesperson. He is. Some may not like it, but that's what he is. His brand, his name is that huge. He's a walking spokesperson, so I, I can't, I'm not going to fault the guy for making his money, but I can understand why somebody be like, damn, bro, that's all his page is. But I mean, he has so many followers. That's literally what his, his Instagram is not even more so about his day-to-day -day life. It's more so about brands and, and making money. So uh, can I fault him? No, but I can understand why people would be critical of that. You know, so I, I get it. Perfectly fitting. This combined with everything else has severely wounded his image. However, his recent actions with the WWE have dealt the final blow. On the 23rd of January 2024, The Rock became a WWE board member and a voice for what takes place in the show. The Rock ensured the audience, at my core I'm a builder who builds for and serves the people, although so far he hasn't served anyone beside himself. How much you ask? Well, you'll need a bit of backstory. Roman Reigns was WWE Champion for roughly three whole years, although it was hinted that the widely adored Cody Rhodes would be next to take the title. The two had a long-running feud so their matchup seemed perfect, and Cody had just won the Royal Rumble, the winner of which normally goes on to face the champ. Well, after all the hype had built, Cody Rhodes unexpectedly told Roman he didn't want to face him, randomly subbing himself out for The Rock who had no place in the story. Suspiciously, this was only 10 days after Dwayne became a board member yeah. with many believing The Rock had simply and here's the crazy thing here's the crazy thing about the whole situation because that happened the fans backlash the fans backlash changed this year's main event of Wrestlemania they listened and ultimately we end up getting the final boss version of The Rock so it, it ultimately worked out but initially no and if Vince McMahon was in control, 
No, we we would have got that match. Would that match have been fun? Yes, but it would have ruined Cody. Cody would have been an afterthought. It would have been GG's. And honestly, I don't even think The Rock was going to win. Me personally, I, I just didn't see The Rock winning, so I don't know. But it worked out in the end written himself into their feud. The highlight therefore gained over 700,000 dislikes, being given the title of the most hated WWE move ever, yep. since the highlight is now the WWE's most disliked video. The backlash was so severe that the story was totally changed, yep. with Cody successfully beating Roman in April, after which The Rock announced he was leaving. The story led some fans to state, I swear I haven't watched this much wrestling in years, although The Rock's personal following hasn't been so healthy. Only 12 months ago, The Rock was gaining 5 million followers per month, although through everything discussed in this video, The Rock is now losing fans for the very first time ever. That's crazy, man. I, I mean, here's the thing. I think, I know with the WWE bubble, people are liking what The Rock is doing. Like, people are actually embracing him being his final boss. So they're actually enjoying it. So with that situation, I think it's a little bit different. Um, they're enjoying what they're getting from him, uh, for sure. Um, including me. I've been enjoying this final boss run. They literally changed up a story and well, changed up what The Rock initially had planned. And, and they went with the story that the fans wanted. So I'm very appreciative of that. Um, once again, I can't fault the guy for being a businessman. But I can understand why people would feel like, he's just a walking ad because a lot of the stuff that he says and does on social media it gives off advertisement instead of just Dwayne himself so that can definitely give some you know fans like this side eye look i mean when you keep saying for the past few years this is your first time going to in and out you tagging him it's obviously for to get people to want to go to in and out because you're in shape and it's like oh damn somebody else is in, in shape like him going to in and out i may want to go to in and out that's that's mainly what it is you can tell so comment down below and let me know are you guys um fans of the rock or do you tolerate him here and there or you're not the biggest fan of him let me know the reasons why and why not let me know down below but i appreciate all love and support road to 150k and i'm staying speedy youtube rest of the champion of the world appreciate y'all kicking me see you on the next one peace